In today's video, I'm going to show you a free Photoshop action I created to help you create work like this, as well as a few other tricks for creating a layout for your design work in Photoshop. If you're new here, my name is Jack and I run StudioAAA.com where I am creating one free graphic design resource every single month. So if that sounds like something that you would be interested in, then subscribing would really help me out. But let's get straight into the video. Before we get started, you are going to want to go and download the quick guides action from StudioAAA.com slash free. Uh, as you can see, it's not here yet because I've not finished working on it yet. But once that's downloaded, if you come into Photoshop and click on window and just make sure actions is ticked, you'll get this little window pop up and you can double click the ATN file that you downloaded from my website and it should install the quick guides folder. If you don't get it up there, if it's not showing up for some reason, then you can click on these three lines here and go down to load actions and just install them by navigating to wherever you saved the file from my website. Now you don't have to follow along in this video, but to show you how these actions work i'm going to create a new document in 2160 by 2160 300 dpi and just to show the basics off here obviously you've got these actions that are called like three by three grid four by four five by five six by six twelve by twelve horizontal and vertical grids these are all very self-explanatory so look if i run the nine by nine grid you'll see all these guides come up now and they scale to the document size i want rid of those i can just run the clear guides action and it deletes them all these are all shortcuts that are available in the view menu but I found that having them as an action just makes your workflow a little bit quicker because they can stay in the actual Photoshop UI rather than being hidden in a menu. The main two that I find the most useful are the guides on layer action and the guides on selection action. Those are the two that I'm going to focus on showing you for creating the type of work that I showed at the beginning. Those two actions are the most helpful for me when I work in that style which I don't do a lot anymore so what I create today is probably not going to be my best work in that style but my aim is really just to show you how you can work with these actions so firstly with my rectangular selection tool i'm just going to draw an area out that i would like to have my design in and just run the guides on selection and it creates the guides doesn't do anything else so that means for this design i'm going to have design stuff here and an image here basically so i'm going to pull in an image that i believe i worked on in another video on this channel but this is obviously from the crt effects kit action that i've done a video on one that you've probably seen because it's my most popular video and I'm now just going to mask it to the other area outside of the guides by just highlighting that with the rectangular selection tool once you've got the guides there the selection tool will sort of stick to the guides so whether you did a smaller selection or a bigger selection try and sort of magnet to the guides and then on the layers panel you can just click the little mask icon and it will mask the image into that area and I'm just going to unlink the mask and move this image over so it's a bit more centered and it's at this point that I like to pull in some kind of display font or a condensed font. And for this one, I'm going to go with Dharma Gothic C. Uh, that font is available on Adobe fonts. So I'm just going to rotate my text again, because I'm not that bothered for this video, what this is going to look like. I'm just going to write the word undead. Now that might sound a bit random, but the original image of this statue is, I'll show it on screen now. It is a statue of a woman who is Ha Skeleton. I will try and find the name of the sculptor or whoever did the statue as well and put that in the video too but yeah I'm just gonna go with that word so using my alignment buttons at the top I'm just gonna center this text on the left if you can't do that you just click these three lines and change from align to selection to align to canvas I am gonna stretch the type a little bit I'm just gonna use my selection tool again to select this section where I defined the design area earlier and I'm gonna press ctrl and j on the background just to create a new layer that is the exact size of that just so we've got that now my text is aligned I can run the guides on layer action and it's going to basically generate guidelines around my text so that I can now structure my design around the text if that makes sense so if you look at other pieces of work I've done in this style this little setup bit at the start essentially defines how the rest of the design will look so if I went with some some other text so let me just write example longer text and 
And if we do clear guides now and run the guides on layer, as you can see, you will end up with a very different design because you've got less room here, more room here. I'm going to stick to doing the undead example though. Um, I probably would have mine a little bit longer though. So I'll just adjust that. Now at this point, because we've had these little margin areas defined by the size of our text, you can now also go and select one of the whole sections for the margin. And again, with your background layer selected, press Control and J to create a copy of that selection. Bring that to the top and then on your alignment buttons here at the top, click align to the right and you've now got this extra section here on the right where you can put some stuff too. You might just want to recenter the image you've used as well just so none of it's being cut out. The next thing I always do is create a new folder and put my text in the folder. I'll name that folder color A. Now if you've got a logo or any type of icon that you usually use on most of your design work obviously I have a few of those you can pull that in and use that as your color B. So I'm going to pull in the studio AAA logo here and just put it at the top and I'll make a new folder again and name that color B. So with the color A folder selected, go to the FX and click on color overlay. You'll get this menu pop up and click on the little white sort of example color here and just color pick something from your image. So I'm going to pick this vibrant green that I went for in the original. Now, of course, for mine, I've only got one color, but for the second color, I'm going to go with something that is just gray just because it works quite well with this specific shape of green. Uh, what you can also do if you want is add an outer glow to each of these and again just make sure you sync it up with the right color and once you've got your basic setup done so you've got some guides you've got a folder for color a folder for color b and you've got these background layers and your image with a mask on it what i find is best to do is click on the bottom layer hold shift click on your top layer whatever that is right click and then convert to a smart object rename that to whatever the name of your design is and then rather than having to do all of the design work before you start adding any kind of texturing or effects you can add some texturing and effects that you would usually add at the end now because they might help inform your decisions on what kind of designs you put around the edges here so for me because this middle design this middle image is like glitchy scan lines from the crt stuff that i was covering in may i would like the stuff on the outskirts to also reflect the like digital aspect there i don't want them to show up as like looking printed or grungy or anything like that i'm going to do duplicate the smart object and I'm going to go to add a Gaussian blur and just add that over the top with screen blend mode and turn the opacity down just so that the glow intensity is a little bit higher once it's outside of the smart object. I'm also going to add a texture which is free from my site from a pack called Scanner Trash. I'm just going to add that on top just because they've got some nice scan lines and imperfections and stuff built into them. Then whenever you're ready to start going back into the design again you can just double click on the smart object and all your work is still here. Then from here it's really Really just about keeping any primary elements you add into the design in this color A and then any secondary or tertiary elements are in color B ideally. So I'm not good at illustrating. If you look at all the icons and stuff in the previous work that I've done in this style, secretly I steal a lot of those from fonts. So if you create a new text layer and if you've got this Segua UI emoji, I don't know if that's pronounced right, font, you can, you can select that. Or if you've got Arial, which I know everyone will have Arial, you can go to Arial, go to Window and make sure Glyphs is ticked. And you can now just browse every character in this font. Now, this isn't going to be true of every font you download, but most of, if not all of, the early Windows default fonts came with all sorts of extras. So you can double click on a Glyph in here and get like this love heart symbol. And I can then line that up using the grid that was made, put it wherever I like. Obviously, for this image I've done and for like this theme I've done, that's not like the most appropriate one, but you can scroll through. Obviously there's going to be all kinds of like, you've got Arabic characters and other Latin characters as well. But you might be surprised at what you find like hiding in the depth of some of these fonts. There's this one out of two fraction or half fraction here. And obviously, like I said earlier, the statue here is half skull. So that works. I'm going to add that. I'm going to put that as a primary. 
element and put it underneath the undead text. Makes sense that the next thing I add then will be in color B. So if we go and pick a different font other than Arial, you might have webdings or wingdings installed. So if we go to one of those, I'm gonna choose wingdings. It's got the skull and crossbones for the, like the death sign maybe, or the sad face I could use and just keep lining things up. The more you add, the more guides you might want. So for example, there I was just lining up the smiley face with the logo. So if I go to the logo now and go back to actions and just run guide on layer, I'll get some more guides generated for that. Obviously these two horizontal ones are not so useful. So I'll just delete those. You can then also create a paragraph text layer. So a point text layer is when you just click and then type whatever you want. But a paragraph text layer is when you draw a box with the text tool first. So if I define the area that the text can exist in, and then let me just change to a more legible font. This maybe will also go in color A and I don't know, I don't have any ideas for what to write for this. So I'm just gonna write undead, I don't know, it's for a YouTube video. You can scale that text down because a lot of the time with this, it doesn't actually matter what it says. Um, it's more about the structure. You can then change the paragraph settings for this. So the text can be like extremely justified like this or centered. Um, again, if you don't see these options, just go to window and make sure properties is ticked or you can do paragraph or paragraph styles but properties is probably the easiest one and then just look for the paragraph icons and ultimately building up a design like the one I showed at the beginning or designs that sort of exist in this style is essentially just sticking to these guides and sticking to the rules you set out at the beginning with your colors your image mask and the structure and building things up over time until it looks full basically. That's where the guides on layer action is going to come in very useful but you've also got the guides on selection action. Obviously I'm just doing this to my work so there's nothing wrong with me doing this. I will say this isn't made for you to copy people one for one or even to copy anyone really. If you find something with a nice structure that you want to build something off or if you find something that has a nice layout that you would like to create something similar to the guides on selection action is really useful for that. So I've got these two pieces of work here as I said, they're both mine. In the event I lost these PSD files though, I wanted to recreate this poster. So this is a poster I made with a 3D artist called Shader Asa. And then this one is another collaboration with a 3D artist called Archfiend. And obviously Archfiend, he did the 3D in the middle and Shader, she did the 3D in the middle as well. I did the rest. Guides on selection does exactly what it says. So if I highlight this text at the top with my selection tool, I'll have to make sure I'm working on a rasterized layer first, just because the way this works is by creating a quick copy of this and then creating guides on that and deleting the copy but yeah just make sure you're not running on a smart object click play on your guides on selection and it will now have generated a guide for where this text layer is if i then come down and do the same on the bottom text run that again those are there now i also had a couple of like guides i remember in the original here for this shape sort of around there and then another one for this one sort of around here as well and then we hide that now and started working on a poster design that had text here and text here. Obviously it's not going to look anything like this because we we're only borrowing like the layout if you like but it was like a it's a quick and easier way to get going and just borrow some structure from this uh, without ripping it off basically. Same goes here so I was just going to show the same on this one basically. So you can just highlight whatever element you would like to build your work around. Click play and then obviously highlight you know anything else that might generate some interesting guides and do the same. Just in the interest of getting something cool done in this video I'm going to pull in some of my other glitch artwork and put it in the same space as I had the CRT image in. Obviously I've got a name and stuff for this so I'm just going to swap this stuff around and just bear with me a second while I edit this. So I've swapped the text around, I've changed the colours as well, did it just with the colour picker. Now I'm just going to go to that emoji font I mentioned before. This came pre-installed on my computer, um, if you're on Windows I'm guessing it will for you too. I don't know how to pronounce it, it's just called Sego UI emoji, I'm probably pronouncing that first word word wrong. It has just basically a text based emoji library. So if you select that font in the glyphs panel, uh, you'll just have basically an icon library pop up. I literally only wanted that one icon here just because it works well with this piece. If I add that in and then line these stars up here with the text. And then just to make this a little bit easier to work on, uh, you've got these rotate actions in quick guides and obviously they don't create guides. But if I just run the rotate 90 action, I've rotated it the wrong way, but I can just keep clicking play until it 
it's in the right orientation and now it just makes it a little bit easier for me adding icons and design stuff to these marginal areas sometimes when i do these i would spend a little bit of time thinking about what text i want to go where but this one i'm just gonna write stuff just so that we can get this video done obviously when you've done doing whatever you needed to do in the rotated version you can just click the action until it's rotated back and it won't disrupt anything in terms of like your smart objects or anything like that just rotate in the one document now i'm just going to spend a little bit of time now building up some elements here i'm not really going to leave photoshop or the glyphs menu or anything like that so anything i cut out is just going to be glyphs and text layers and just coming up with what goes where basically part of the reason i stopped doing work in this style is because it is a little bit tedious and doesn't always look how i want it to look because i'm not an illustrator i can't spend all day drawing out glyphs and stuff to to just sort of decorate the edge of a design um which is why i obviously do more stuff like this piece in the middle also it can be nice as well if you've got your main sort of header font as well as a body text font to use a display font as well uh, i'm going to use this one called rs rain which i will find i can't remember the name of the author i do know who the author is i just can't recall their name right now i'll put their name on screen or i will try and find it for the description yeah it can be nice to have some display text in the alternate color in one of the margins as well as some shapes as well now once you've got it to a point where you've got some stuff going on you might want to change the background color and because we created layers for those earlier with the selecting the guides and doing control j you can just go back to those and control shift and click on both of them and go to layer new fill layer solid color and you can pick something from the image or whatever color you like just make sure it's on top of both of them and this looks awful but i'm just showing you it as an example like you can of course pick something that might be more appropriate for whatever you're working on and then once you're done obviously save your smart object and exit and then you can add any final adjustments you want to add here i deleted mine from earlier because obviously i sort of restarted but any adjustment layers and masking and texturing you want to do i would put a sort of one above so that the design itself is preserved you just got a bit more freedom to customize and stuff i feel like i've said this multiple times in this video but this obviously is not my best work in this style because i'm prioritizing just getting this done without it being a three hour video but hopefully you can see that rather than having to pull in each guide yourself or create the guides like clicking through the menus every time the actions included in this pack help you just get there quicker basically and spend more of your time on the actual creation work rather than the layout the last thing i'm just going to add to mine is some textures from the vhs textures pack these are also free and we're on that page that you went on at the beginning of the video so if you want to get these you can do they're quite subtle so you don't need to add them but yeah if you spend a bit more time on yours you can get some more structure and layout like in the examples i showed but hopefully this helped some of you might remember this action i've put this action on the shop before uh, and then removed it because i've never been able to like find a cool name for it or yeah it's just taken up a space for a free download that could be better used for like textures or whatever it's back on there now like long term so there's no rush to get this one as i said at the start of the video i'm making one free design resource every month for the rest of the year so if that's the kind of thing you like then please like and subscribe and all that stuff because it really helps other than that i hope this helped and i will see you in the next video